gives me great pleasure to invite you all to this uh, webinar uh, where we will make the effort to introduce you to a couple of our new partners. Um, first of all, let me thank you for joining us. Uh, and I'd like to welcome you all to this webinar. And I'm sure it will be an informative and uh, interesting uh, session because we are really introducing two new products into our market. They haven't been um, present or have been in some form or the other over a period of time. But uh, this is to just say that once we come out of this little problem over the past year that we all lived through, uh, things will move back to better times. We see the light at the end of the tunnel and hopefully for travel to pick up in time to come, hopefully sooner than later. Uh, before I go ahead, let me introduce myself. My name is Manu. I work with Altaya Travel and assisted very ably by my team of leisure specialists headed by Mr. Asif Hussain, who heads our leisure department. And Altaya Travel has been in existence for more than 40 years. We have a very strong portfolio of world-class organizations whom we have represented in our region for more than 35 years, perhaps. Um, and so it's a continuous effort to introduce new products, new uh, sort of improved areas where all of us together can offer something new to our clients and ensure that they are uh, exposed to things which are going to be more and more required by our mutual clients and that they will uh, experience some unique adventures and holidays, which hopefully will last them a lifetime. So uh, before going any further, I'd like to introduce to you our two new partners who have very graciously associated themselves with us and whom we are very proud to represent. And I hope in time to come, uh, they will become more prominent in our market and will lead to a successful and uh, mutually uh, beneficial relationship uh, at the end of it all, ensuring that our customers get a wide variety of choice of, uh, of options when they travel. Uh, so let me say this once again, uh, these are not the standard type of cruise lines. These are all very specialized and I'm sure that our market will benefit from these experiences that these cruise lines provide. Uh, Without saying much more, I would like to introduce you to Mr. Pierre Thomas from uh, Swan Hellenic Cruises. He's the Director of Expeditions Operations and also Mr. Stephen Winter from Ponan Cruises, who is the International Sales Director for uh, Ponan Cruises. I would like to hand over to uh, Pierre who will lead us through some more insights and more detailed information on the fantastic product that they have created and how it's going to be impactful in our region and ensure that the clients and customers come back very happy with extremely unique experiences. Over to you, Perry. Thank you very much, Manu. Uh, I will share my screen and uh, you would just have to tell me if you can um, see my screen i think it should be working if everything goes well yes wonderful um let me let me introduce myself first my name is pierre thomas i'm based in antwerp belgium but i grew up um outside of belgium i lived 10 years in africa as a kid then I was very fortunate to be offered the position of naturalist guide and expedition leader in the Galapagos Islands, where I worked from 1994 till 2003. From then, I've worked for several small um, expedition cruise ship companies. And in November last year, I joined Swan Hellenic as director of expedition operations. Now, Swan Hellenic is a company with a long heritage. It was founded in the 1950s, and we are now relaunching the brand with uh, the building of three brand new expedition cruise ships. And over the last couple of months, 
we've opened 11 offices worldwide. Our first two ships that are going to start sailing will be relatively small uh, compared to other cruise ships. Our ships have a capacity of 152 guests for our first two ships. And the third one will have a capacity of 192 guests. So now, basically, quickly to go over a brand development timeline, you can see the foundation of the company was in the early 1950s. Our first ship is starting to sail on the 30th of November for the Antarctica season. Our second ship will start to sail in the British Isles in April 2022. And our third ship will start to sail by the end of 2022. And this is a little bit what our geography looks like. You can see we'll be spending some time, several months in Antarctica. Then we'll be going up along the west coast of South America, Central America, North America to go up to Alaska going to the Russian Far East and then back down along some fantastic Polynesian islands. Our second ship will be starting to sail from the British Isles. We'll go up to Iceland, Svalbard, Franz Josef Land, and then even up to one of the mighty rivers of Siberia called the Yenisei. Then we'll be going up towards Greenland, Canadian Arctic, and we'll be going down south along the east coast of South America to reach Antarctica as well. Now, what is important to understand is the design of a typical expedition cruise ship. If you look carefully at the upper part of the slide, you can see uh, on the ship there's a swan painted. This is the logo of Swan Hellenic. When you go down in a straight line from that swan to the water level and you go a little bit to the left, you have what is called a shell door and we can disembark our guests either from starboard or port side from those shell doors. Now, if sea conditions wouldn't be favorable, we will be able to disembark our guests from a third way, which is uh, located at the marina deck. And you can see the marina deck. If you go to the lower left corner of the slide, you can see the stern of the ship. You can also see there's a couple of stairs bringing down our guests to the marina deck. You can also see we have two types of Zodiacs on board. We have 11 Mark V Zodiacs. Those are the slightly smaller Zodiacs. Those are those black inflatable boats that we use to bring our guests from the ship to shore and from the shore back to the ship. As we go to really remote parts of the world without any man-made infrastructure, we use those zodiacs to bring our guests from the ship to shore towards rocky or sandy shores where we can disembark our guests. Now, looking at the capacity, you can see it's a relatively small capacity, limited capacity of 152 guests, staff members about 120. What is important is the speed, 15 knots, the propulsion system as well important nowadays, hybrid diesel electric, polar class PC5, is relatively important as it allows the ship to sail through ice of about one meter in thickness. Now, if you look at the deck plans and the cabin categories, you can see we have four different types of cabin categories, of stateroom categories. The ocean view, which is the standard, about 19 square meters, which is located on deck four. Deck five and deck six, we have the balcony and the suites. And then you can also see the premium suites are located at the back of the ship. Just a couple of impressions to show you what the ship design looks like uh, inside the ship. The main restaurant called the Swan Restaurant has a capacity for all our guests and the menus are inspired and created by renowned chefs. One is Italian, is Andrea Rivaldoni, and the other one is Korean, is Sang Kyung Ho. Um, this is great. We do have other um, venues where we can serve different types of food. For example, the club lounge located on deck seven is a place where we can enjoy freshly made Italian pizza available 24 hours a day. Another great area, especially for people who don't want to miss anything of this fantastic scenery that is offered in those remote parts of the world, like the Russian Far East, like Antarctica, we can have some quick bites outside along the pool bar and grill, which could be burgers, wraps, creative salads. 
This is all possible as well on deck seven. An important area for us, for the guests and for the expedition team is the observation lounge. This is the place where each evening we'll have recaps, briefings given by the expedition team and the expedition leader. But during sea days, this is also the place where our guest lecturers will be giving uh, their enriching talks about topics related to the areas we visit. This is also the place where we have entertained piano music in the evening. This is also the place where we serve tea in the afternoon. Why not? People like to enjoy that. Always keeping in mind, we never lose contact with the surrounding scenery. You see that the ship has been designed with large panoramic windows, never losing contact with this fascinating natural world. Then room service, of course, is available 24 hours a day. And then in the polar regions, I assume this will be popular. We have a sauna, we have a jacuzzi. So this is going to be quite a popular space. Now, anyone who wouldn't like to, to miss out on their daily exercises, we have a fitness on board, as you can see, with several devices. That's all perfect. And then to give everyone an idea of what the design of our staterooms look like, you can see they're Scandinavian inspired. I think they will appeal to most of the nationalities. This is our standard Ocean View stateroom. Then we have our balcony stateroom. Those are about 28 square meters in surface. We have the suites of about 44 square meters in surface. And we have the premium suites uh, with about 49 square meters in surface. Now, what is important? What do we include in our voyages? We offer a one night pre-cruise hotel accommodation with breakfast. Then we, of course, pick up our guests at the airport, bring them to the hotel on the day uh, before the embarkation. And we bring them from the hotel to the port facilities where the ship will be located to facilitate their transfer from the hotel to the ship. On board, all meals are included, a selection of beverages is included, we have a lecture program, the excursions are included, Wi-Fi and onboard gratuities and port taxes are included. Now, what is important is for our polar destinations, meaning the Russian Far East, the Arctic and Antarctica sailings. We have the complete shore program um, in, included. Then we have a branded Swan Hellenic Expedition Parka, which is uh, complementary. Then we have the use of the rubber boots for our shore landings. Those are included as well. And for Antarctica sailings, the return flights, Buenos Aires to Suaya or Santiago to Suaya are included as well. And for the rest of the world, for example, the west coast of South America, we always include a highlights tour in each port of call. Of course, there will be some optional extras that are not included that will come at an additional cost for premium shore excursions, private zodiac tours, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There will be an additional cost. But what is important is to create a fantastic memory of this voyage of exploration on board of our expedition cruise ships. We would like uh, to put emphasis on the cultural aspect, on uh, the educational aspect. This is why on all departures, besides the expedition team we have on board, we always have a guest lecturer on board. So we will always offer uh, lectures given by those experienced people joining us. But besides that, we have a photographer, videographer on board who puts together uh, a, a memory uh, movie of the voyage. And this will be accessible for everyone at the end of the cruise. They will be sent a link and they will be able to download the movie when they're back home. Besides that, we also have a citizen science lab as we would like to create an educational experience. We are going to work together with research students, PhD students uh, doing research. We will facilitate um, the ship and so they can share their research together with our guests. And this gives you a little bit of an idea, I think, especially interesting for your market in the summer months, June, July, August, when it in your geographical area it is very hot. Why not convince uh, your guests to join us 
in the Arctic, uh, Russian Far East, why not Svalbard and uh, Franz Josef Land be confronted with ice, with the glaciers, Zodiac cruising amongst icebergs in Canada, in Greenland. I think this has to be quite a spectacular experience for people coming from your geographical areas. But as well, why not? Join us on the west coast of Africa. We're there with um, some really fantastic lectures. We have a renowned Peruvian archaeologist, Guillermo Koch. He specialized in pre-Columbian uh, culture. Then we have Tim and Stephanie Slater going to join us higher up, uh, talking about astronomy, how that was used by old cultures living in South America. We have Norman Hammond coming to join us. But those are just a couple of examples of the lectures that we invite on board of our ships. And here you get an idea uh, of what kind of activities are offered on board of expedition cruise ships. The place where people get ready to disembark is called the base camp. In some ships, it is called the mudroom. This is a place where we have lockers. People can leave their parkas, their boots uh, when they come back on board. Uh, we will use our zodiacs, which are those black inflatable boats. Those are used for our zodiac cruises, shore excursions, landings. Without the zodiacs, we would not be able to call it an expedition cruise. And then we'll offer all kinds of activities from short to extended hikes, kayaking, encounters with local people, depending on the areas where we go to. But important for us is our sustainability. So we definitely try to uh, reduce heavily on single-use plastic. Our ship is fitted with a selective catalytic reduction unit. We have a dynamic positioning uh, system on board, allowing to stay in the same position without dropping anchor. Uh, battery backups, we have advanced water treatment and potabilization system, complementary reusable uh, bottles for all guests. And then, of course, in those uh, fragile environments that we explore, uh, our staff has to follow the strict guidelines to limit our footprint in the destinations we visit. And a typical expedition day, if we can call uh, it a typical expedition day, because there's no such thing as a typical expedition day. It all depends on what we encounter on the way. It could be that we are uh, seeing some humpback whales, some um, orcas, then of course, We'll lower the speed, we'll invite the guests to join us on the observation deck and to look out for the fantastic wildlife we're encountering. But normally we would send out a scouting zodiac to assess the landing conditions. After breakfast, we invite our guests to disembark and then we'll offer all kinds of activities joined and led by our expedition team members which would be walks, hikes, depending where we are, but mainly around the Pacific with very clear waters. We'll offer snorkeling, we'll offer zodiac cruises along the coastline, looking at birds and wildlife. Then we come back on board for lunch. In the afternoon, we'll disembark again for an afternoon's excursion. And in the evening, we join all together in our observation lounge to recapitulate on the highlights of the day. And this is when the expedition team, the guest lecturers are invited to take the microphone, to speak a little bit about the highlight of the day, and they will share this with our guests. And then the expedition leader who organizes um, the, the voyage together with the captain, they will um, explain the plans for the next day. This is followed by dinner, and then depending on the weather conditions, it's always great as we're far from any light pollution to offer stargazing on board. This is for many people one of the highlights. And this is just a couple of impressions of what an expedition looks like. We're always sending out at least two zodiacs together for safety purposes. Our zodiacs are equipped with a sea track system so that the ship always can keep uh, track of where the zodiacs are. It is the unexpected encounters, like in this case, a humpback whale, that becomes the highlight. So it's often the unplanned um, encounters that become the highlight of an expedition voyage. And with those zodiacs, we are literally able to go anywhere into very shallow waters. This is a picture taken 
in uh, Panama, in the uh, Darien jungle, a couple of years ago, to look out for the Embera people. We use those zodiacs to go along bird, uh, seabird colonies. We use them to reach islands in the Russian Far East, such as Yankicha Island. But we also use them to disembark, not only on rocky shore, but on sandy beaches. Sometimes, as you can see, they're not in warm regions, but in cooler regions where we gratefully take use of those rubber boots that are provided on board of the ship. And you can see that here we have our guests disembarking with the rubber boots on. They can start walking and then they come back um, from their trip. But the same kind of beach with little pebbles could be somewhere in Costa Rica, like here. And there you can see that no boots are needed. People just sit down on the side, swing their legs back on board, and we're ready to go back to the ship. And besides that, those zodiacs are really versatile little crafts. You can see that we can use them not only for zodiac cruises to shuttle our guests from the ship to shore and from the shore back to the ship, but we also use them as a converted platform. We call this a zodiac or snorkel platform. We have ladders on them, and this is a great way to. Uh, show the underwater world so that people can explore the underwater world in those remote parts of the planet. And with this, I hope that um, you have an idea of what um, Swan Hellenic is uh, going to offer starting on the 30th of November this year. And with this, I'd like to, to pass uh, the screen to Stephen. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pierre. Thank you very much. That was exciting and interesting. I'm sure people will find this a unique experience. Thank you so much. Stephen, well, welcome. Thank you. That, that was very interesting, Pierre. Obviously, you and I uh, can uh, provide uh, some incredible uh, adventures for people. And it's not what people think of right off the bat when they think of cruising. We have There's a lot of different types of cruising out there to a lot of places. Um, and it's a very exciting, very exciting piece of uh, work. So, Ponant, we are a uh, also a, a expedition cruise company. We are the world leader, actually, in luxury expeditions. We have been in business for over 30 years. The company was founded in 1988 by the gentleman there in the middle in the suit, Mr. Jean-Emmanuel Sauvé. Now, he wasn't a businessman. He was a sailor. And so he, he wanted to create a company with his fellow marine sailors uh, to show his love for the ocean, his love for the environment, and to re resuscitate uh, the French cruise industry that kind of had gone away. And since 2010, which is the year that I started the company as international sales, we've invested over 1 billion euro in building new ships. Uh, the ownership of the company is the Artemis Group, which also owns Gucci, Yves Saint Laurent, Boteca, Chateau de Trois. So they have a, a big hit of taking French luxury products out into the world of the international market. Well, I have a, a, a brief video here. I hope this works on the webinar, but it's just a nice introduction. He has been our guide for over 30 years. We use this experience to serve you by designing and creating unique luxury and expedition cruises. Voyage to all four corners of the earth, from the glaciers of the Antarctic to the lagoons of the Pacific, from Caribbean beaches to the shores of Asia. Discover a world you never knew existed. Ponant takes you to remote places far from the mainstream. From stopover to stopover every morning, a new horizon opens up before you. Enjoy all the magic of Ponon, a travel experience that is both immersive and sophisticated. Deliberately designed for a limited number of passengers, our luxury expedition cruise ships combine design with the latest technology and an eco-responsible approach. Artists, scientists, and speakers travel with you, bringing to light the riches of the countries, regions visited. Every day, enjoy a taste of excellence with exciting cuisine, full of subtle flavors developed for you by our talented chefs. Enjoy the many activities on offer and share great times together. Opt for an all-inclusive cruise. Let us guide you and save for the pleasures of a voyage returning with memories of a lifetime. Explore the globe with the world's number one in luxury expedition cruises. Make your dreams of adventure become a reality 
most comfortable condition at the heart of extreme landscapes. So a few things about Ponant. We are a French company. The word Ponant is the word that means to sail towards the west. The company was founded in western France and in Brittany. And we are, we have the most modern fleet in the world with the newest technologies. We have all of our ships are certified green ships. And as a matter of fact, last year, the Nature and Biodiversity Conservation Union uh, voted us, uh, this is a German organization, not, not NGO, have voted us the most eco-friendly cruise company in the world. With all of the uh, amenities, dynamic positioning, advanced water treatment, sonar devices, and environmental impact assessment for every cruise we go on around the world. We have currently 13 ships uh, over seven continents. Uh, because of the situation, they're not all in operation, depends on which part of the world they're in. But we're hoping that by the end of December, they all will be back in the waters and taking our passengers around the world once again, although we are currently cruising. This is a shot of our fleet. It all started with my personal favorite, the 16 cabin sailboat, no, no, three mast sail ship that sails in the Mediterranean in the summertime and in the Caribbean in the wintertime. When I came on board in 2010, it was the first year we launched our first, what we call the sister ships, which are the Boreal, the and 132 cabins, with 95% of the cabins having a balcony. These are the ships that up to now have taken us to the Antarctic and the Arctic, but then also, also all over the world. We built since 2018, six Explorer cabins, uh, category ships, which have 92 cabins, 100% which have balconies. These are slightly smaller than the sister ships. And I just got back from an incredible voyage in September uh, the uh, dry run uh, to the North Pole on our new ship, the Sharko, and I will share some pictures of that amazing trip with you in a few moments. So again, the Ponant, uh, a beautiful ship, active sailboat. Uh, every day at the end of your activities, you go up to the top deck, the sun deck, and you unfurl the sails, and there's music playing, and it's really a fantastic experience. Our sister ships, as I said, we have four of them. Um, built for luxury expeditions, maximum 264 guests. Um, and in the Antarctic, we limit that to 199 so that you are more possibilities to disembark onto the zodiacs, onto the ice. They only can get, you can only bring 100 people at a time onto the ice. So we minimize the amount of people on board for that. Uh, we have two restaurants, we have two lounges, bars, a theater, a pool. Um, and as you can see, it's a very uh, contemporary design. We actually want to know back at the British cruise award ceremony for the world's best boutique cruise line. And I'd like to consider that sort of a, a good description of who we are. We are like a luxury boutique hotel on the water. And then we decided in 2018 on our 30th anniversary, should we go bigger? Should we go smaller? We decided to go smaller. We believe in the small is beautiful uh, philosophy. So we built these explorers, all in the famous French explorers. 2018, we launched La Perouse and Champlain. The Bougainville and the De Monteville were launched in 2019. And with a little bit of delay, uh, we uh, launched the Bello and the Jacques Cartier. Again, 92 cabins, all with ocean views, beautiful outdoor um, infinity pool. You see here a shot of one of the cabins and the restaurant area. On the seventh deck, you have a beautiful spa and sauna looking out over the ocean. And one really unique feature in the world is our underwater lounge on all six of our explorers. This is an, uh, a multi-sensorial underwater lounge, which you, allows you not only to look out and see the undersea world, but we re register the sounds, whether it's whales or dolphins. And we, we play those sounds inside that particular lounge that creates a very unique atmosphere, uh, sort of like being in the belly of a whale. We also acquired in 2019 the Paul Gauguin, and we recently renovated the ship completely. Uh, this, this is a specialist in South Pacific cruising. Uh, so this is a, a really in-depth cruising, going to, to Society Islands and Marquises, and really uh, making the most of this world-class luxury destination. See here, these, this is our biggest ship by far with 332 guests. A lot of outdoor space, great dining, and incredible activities, fun and sun for everyone. And finally, and most recently, we just had this inauguration of this cruise ship uh, this week, or last week, actually, now. 
These, the Commandant Charcot, a luxury expert, exploration ship, a hybrid liquid and natural gas ship, take us to the geographic North Pole. It, is, it was the first ship on September 6th, uh, first French ship to reach the North Pole. It is a PC2 class. There's only one other cruise ship in the world that is, has a higher high class, and that is the 50 years of victory. But that, in terms of comfort and noise, uh, they don't compare to us. We have here a, a shot of the outside deck. We do have the possibility to go forward or backwards through the ice. Disembarking onto the Zodiac is done on the side of the ships. And you have here, there's an indoor pool. There's uh, a, a, an owner's suite that has um, 150 square meters and 185 square meters balcony with an outdoor uh, jacuzzi, double uh, uh, massage room, cabins. We have some duplex cabins as well. And I wanted to show you some actual pictures of the ship uh, going through the ice, exploring uh, the world. The ship will be going, as I said, to the geographic North Pole in the summer months. It goes to the Antarctic and deep, far, much farther south than any other ship can go uh, with its uh, possibility to go completely silent and emission free with the electrical backup engine that we use quite often during our cruise up the north. This is me pretending to be a brave adventurer, but it was so easy to get to the North Pole with this ship. Uh, it was quite a fantastic experience to get out there and look uh, at this pristine world and are protecting and definitely needs our, um, our the knowledge we can bring. I'm standing on the hella deck. We're in Cirrus. We spent about an hour silently watching him walk around the front of the ship. Shot taken from a helicopter of us going through the ice. As soon as we went through the ice, uh, it, the, the, the lead started to refreeze again. It was, it was um, interesting. We have a helicopter that takes, uh, that goes out ahead of the ship to find the path of least resistance to get to the pole but it was an incredible adventure that you can offer to all of your guests as well. Zodiac Expeditions, uh, that's me taking a picture of whoever was taking a picture of me. And a shot I took one morning as um, we were walking around in the ice. Again, fantastic cruise, a real adventure of a lifetime, something that I would recommend highly to anyone who could do it. In terms of destinations, um, we cover the world. Uh, there's no place to be don't go to uh, in this in the summer months the our summer months from about uh, march through october where the northern northern hemisphere could be a med cruise greek isles croatia could be the nordic uh, northern europe uh, british isles scottish isles fjords of norway up to iceland greenland northwest passage in alaska and now we're heading into our winter season the ships will be heading back down to south america antarctica the indian ocean the seychelles asia australia and new zealand we have both polar and tropical cruises, whether it's Papua New Guinea, Amazon River, Alaska, Greenland, and, or the geographic pole, we have the ship and the destination for you. And our yachting cruises, whether it's diving, astronomy, and uh, music, art, and literature, we have many different themed cruises. National Geographic, because of our shared philosophy about sustainable travel, picked us to be their partner for their national geographic exhibitions on which each departure you have a natural geographic expert and a photographer on board to give uh, photography lessons. And on our board, our ships, it is an all-inclusive, all meals, open bar, uh, port and tax, uh, port fees and tax included, butler services and suites, all the shore landings, parkas are given as a gift that you get to keep. And it is a, a bilingual cruise. French and English are the two official languages spoken on board. So just to wrap it up, we are a company with 30 years experience all of our ships are certified clean. We have the newest, most up-to-date fleet in the industry. We have over 4,000 departures yearly in all seven continents. We have a partnership with National Geographic. We have an approachable luxury, exciting expedition cruises, and we are focused on the future as we continue to grow. Thank you very much. Thank you, Stephen. That was wonderful. So here we have some very exciting uh, products which probably did not exist in our market uh, as available to sell uh, locally to our partner agents. And I'm sure all of them watching would be quite excited by it because this is something uh, new. It's, it's, it's been available for 30 years, as Stephen says, and uh, since 1954, so on Helnick, but 
it's about our market and how we can promote it and ensure that we maximize the exposure to these products and hopefully find good people who will be happy to take part in these mini or major expeditions. And I'm sure these events will be something that they will remember for the rest of their life. I have a couple of questions for both of you, Steve and Pierre. You know, we are coming through an extraordinary time in the world, which I think none of us ever went through. So uh, just as sort of travel starts to rebound, we've all heard that there's a lot of latent demand for travel. People are willing to travel, move around. But what strategies do you think uh, both your companies would employ to regain the confidence of the cruise travelers? Yeah, can I start with you? Yes, well, um, it's been very challenging times uh, for the whole cruise industry in the, in the last 18 months. We were very fortunate that uh, our ships are being built at this time, and so we could adapt uh, to create ships that would answer to those challenging uh, conditions uh, with this pandemic. So we have developed on the way, we've developed our ships, um, built-in HEPA filters. Uh, we can do onboard testing uh, against and see if people are uh, positive, testing positive. We can do PCR tests on board. We can do antigen tests on board. We have temperature measurements on board, et cetera, et cetera. But to create a confidence, we also offer the possibility to have a relatively small or reduced deposit uh, when people book their trip, which is also in case testing positive, they will be entirely refunded or a post-cruise credit uh, will be offered to the guests. So that's basically how we try to, to regain the confidence of, uh, of the cruise travel. Wonderful. Stephen, your yeah, I mean, we, we, we actually, yes, we actually, um, again, as with Pierre, we, we both have small ships and that makes it much easier to implement uh, protocols and safety strategies uh, that some of our uh, competition with much more, many people on board will have a bit more of a challenge with. But I can proudly say that we were the in the world back in the summer cruising in a, in a constrained situation. We cruised in the Mediterranean. I, I myself cruised with my wife and my two daughters around Corsica. So everyone had to have, uh, well, this was before the vaccine, but everyone had to have the PCR test 72 hours before. They were tested again upon uh, embarkation. Uh, there was the mask wearing when you were walking around the ship. Uh, everything that came on and off the ship was sprayed. Every time we as passengers embarked or disembarked, our temperatures were taken. And because of the zodiacs and because of the size of the ships, we were able to go to more remote places. So there was less reaction, uh, interaction with, um, with local people. And actually we did about 70 cruises last summer. And then summer of this year, 21, we continue to do the same. Some countries are still close to cruising, uh, but uh, Mediterranean, Iceland cruising, we did as well. And able to test our protocol. Uh, this summer, 21, we had zero cases of COVID. It's not to say that it'll never happen, but we have uh, put aside several cabins in our ships in case people do need to be isolated before we come off the ship. That's, that's uh, and we yeah, too, please. like Swan and uh, Hellenic, have... Say again? No, no, carry on, please. Yes, yes. Um, and uh, we have also been much more flexible in terms of, as, as, as Pierre was saying, in terms of uh, deposits. Uh, we allow people to cancel up to 30 days beforehand if they cannot make it, or if we have to cancel the cruise, then there's the possibility for a future credit or refund as they wish, as they feel. And in the last month or two, uh, we've had historic numbers of calls of people wanting to book mostly for next year, um, but we're very optimistic about the future of cruising. That's great to hear. And especially in your environment, in your cruise lines, it seems to be more easily manageable. Uh, in instead of the other big mega cruise ships, which could possibly have a much more uh, extremely uh, difficult situation to handle in case something goes wrong, but let's hope for the best. And that doesn't happen once again, anytime soon. And tell me, how, how would, you, would you make any modifications or uh, 
uh, have any changes or do something different as far as your entertainment, dining options are concerned on board, or would that not make much of a difference? Steve, or, or would, would you like me to, to well? Yes, please, yeah, yes, please. Go yeah, ahead, yeah. Us, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Both at the same time. <laughs> for, us at the, well, for us, it's, it's an interesting situation because we're just starting to operate and uh, our maiden voyage will take place on the 30th of November, starting out of Ushuaia, going down to Antarctica and so on. So, um, yeah, dining, recreation, entertainment, our main philosophy at Swan Hellenic is to create an educational, educationally enriching experience for our guests. So basically, we would like to put the focus on education, on our guest lectures, on our experience expedition uh, team. But uh, regarding the dining, um, our menus are inspired by um, two renowned chefs. We have Andrea Rivaldoni, who's from Italy, and then we have the Korean chef um, Sang Kyung Ho, uh, who basically are going to create interesting internationally um, uh, designed menus for for basically all tastes. Um, if this if this answers uh, your question, yes. For, for, for us, the only the only difference that I have seen is that um, we, um, uh, at least for last summer and into this summer, we uh, we don't didn't have the buffet service. Uh, you had a la carte seating at the tables, um, but it, the, the entertainment continued uh, as long as um, you know, the, there was a mask on when you're walking around. We, that wasn't um, um, a problem. Um, I, I think that. Uh, when I went to the North Pole, uh, after about day six, and we'd all been sort of together on the ship, we'd all had shown proof of vaccination, we were able to take off our masks because we were sort of in a bubble, and there was no outside influences or anything like that. So that created the opportunity to have halfway into the cruise, um, no longer to have the mask, but there, there is the gels, there is doctors and nurses on board all of our ships, um, in case there's any kind of, but every time we went into the restaurant, we put our forehead up to a screen and we get our temperatures taken. Uh, but most people that I saw on, on the cruises this summer and last summer were extremely happy just to be anywhere, that they were more than willing to put up with the minor inconveniences. They still had the dancing, the live music, uh, the food, incredible situation. Of course, when you're sitting and eating, you can take off your mask. And the only difference was that, you know, uh, you wouldn't go up and pick your own food. Somebody would get it for you or you'd ask them or you'd have an a la carte menu. So I don't think that's going to be a big change. Many well, thank you for that answer. And I think I'll just ask you the last little question, which has to do with what all do we think is the potential for the future? So what are your expectations of how the cruise industry will evolve and develop and grow probably over the next three to five years? I'm sure the uh, outlook is uh, positive and everybody's looking forward to uh, better times especially with all the vaccinations, et cetera. So your comments, last comments on that. Pierre, could you answer me please, thank you. Well, it's, it's interesting. People have been forced to stay home, uh, forced not to travel over the last 18 months. So I think the general tendency over the next couple of years, there will be a, a considerable growth in the cruise sector. Uh, we're already starting to feel um, a stronger, um, I would say, a confidence in the market, in different markets, that people are showing signs they're wanting to traveling again. I think with the situation we have uh, since the last 18 months, people will more and more want to go and explore areas that are remote, um, like Arctic, Russian Far East, uh, Greenland, Canadian Arctic, Antarctica, etc. So I'm pretty optimistic. And uh, I'm sure that the industry uh, first has survived. Uh, we were fortunate that we didn't have a ship in the water yet and we're just starting to operate after vaccination campaigns have been started, but I'm pretty optimistic. Um, there is uh, more discovery, more adventure, more exploration coming up. And I'm sure that the expedition cruise segment will have a strong growth over the next years. Thank you, Phil. That sounds very, very positive and interesting. Stephen, your last comments on 
potentially yes, I, and I agree. I, I agree. With, I agree with Pierre. We're sort of in that niche of producing uh, small ships uh, expedition, which I think people are um, reacting to. Uh, it is. It's not all rosy for the cruise industry. There are people who are, the larger companies are struggling to get back the confidence of the public and to get them back into the water. But I think people, as Pierre said, are really um, desperate to go anywhere. I mean, just to be on a ship, just to see a new destination, just to leave their houses. And if, and if our numbers uh, are any indication, uh, 2022 is gonna be a great year for us. Uh, but we have had to uh, postpone certain future projects because we had a, a 18 months gap where um, uh, we didn't have much revenue, almost any revenue coming in. And so um, that will be impacted. But I do think there's still a lot of small ships uh, on the books going to be coming out in the next three or four years. And that seems to be the sector of the industry where you'll see the fastest uh, growth back to normal, I'd say. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you, Pierre. Thank you, Stephen. That's very insightful information. And uh, I hope all the participants who have been listening to you both have gone away with uh, lots of positive uh, information and uh, a sense that, yes, things will get better in time to come. So thank you very, very much for your time. Much appreciated. And I'm sure you'll hear more from our part of the world going forward in the near future. Thank you very much once again.